cameras are rolling at Olympic College right here in Bremerton, Washington. A new generation of writers, actors, and filmmakers are honing their craft at the OC Film School. Since its inception in 2013, Olympic College's fastest growing program has expanded to offer associate and now bachelor degrees in digital filmmaking. OC students have been winning award after award in local film festivals and 48-hour competitions. The program is now housed inside OC's College Instruction Center, a brand new state-of-the-art facility complete with sound stages, editing facilities, screening theater, and more. On this episode of BCAT Presents, we're going behind the lens and meeting with the staff of the OC Film School to find out why their model has been such a hit. I'm here with the OC Film School staff, and Tim, let's get started with your work experience here at OC. Tell me about the origins of the OC Film School. Well, when I was first hired here at OC, uh, the college had a traditional theater arts department, and the college was looking to kind of increase the robustness of the department, so I suggested that we form a program that would be more responsive to the authentic needs of dramatic artists in the 21st century. And what we needed to look at was the fact that theater really was the vehicle of drama in the 19th century, and film is the vehicle of drama in the 21st century, and that's where all the employment is. But more importantly than that is that we were about to see a sea change. There was about to be a shift in the film business, and that shift was going to be caused by the digital revolution. And right on the horizon, we didn't know the timing on this, but on the horizon, we knew that everything was about to change. See, in my day, in order to work in the film business, I had to work for a major corporation. I used to work for Universal, because the cost of the camera was about three quarters of a million dollars. But after the shift into the digital age, which we've now entered, digital filmmaking, the cost of a, a entry-level professional camera is about $5,000. Of course, the, the big digital cameras we're shooting feature films with cost more than that, but they're quite inexpensive to rent. Anyway, we wanted to anticipate this shift because we knew that, every, that the business was going to go street level, and this is where all the employment opportunities were going to be, at the street level. Small production companies producing episodic content and feature film content for the new distribution channels like we have today, like Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube Red. And so we wanted to anticipate this, so this is exactly what we did, and we were lucky we caught the wave precisely, like a good surfer, we caught the wave. <laughs> And as the shift occurred, we were slowly building the classes. We started with acting for the camera, and then we had screenwriting classes, and we started to bring in some of the technical classes. And so we were then extremely fortunate that we were able to begin to put into place a faculty that was experienced in this new digital age. So I was lucky. I, I, I imported Aaron from Los Angeles, and we imported Amy from Bolivia, <laughs> and they were both working just in the first couple of years of this business, because the digital age is brand new. Sure. Yeah. So that's, that's how it kind of came into being. And the administration of Olympic College was very supportive in terms of building this slowly so that we could serve the authentic needs of the dramatic artists of the 21st century. And uh, I think we all feel or uh, fortunate because that's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And really the foresight that went into that, being able to, like you said, anticipate that wave into what you're growing into now, um, this building for one, to be able to encompass this new technology that you're able to use now. And the program is just growing exponentially. It is. This is now the fast track for filmmakers. It's not the traditional way of going and working for a major corporation and working your way up through the unions and whatnot. The fast track is Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, and because of the digital age, groups of people can come together and can create this new episodic content. They can create this new feature film content, and they can sell them on these new media distribution channels. And uh, I wish I was young, because if I was young, I would be a student in this program. So, <laughs> well, that young. sells you it right young. there. I am young? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I think you've sold it to us right there. That's exactly it. If you're, if you're the head of this dream and you want to be a student here, then you're doing something right. <laughs> I certainly would love to be. And he's been dedicated to that dream for the past 10 years. So mm -hmm. what you're seeing happening now 
and this building and the, and the sound stage and, and all of this film program being what it is, that's Tim. So Tim and his vision is, this is what it's about. Well, uh, thank you, Aaron. Uh, I'd also like to thank the tremendous support we've had from the college and the extraordinary faculty. I never dreamed, if I was still in LA, I knew I could, I could probably get a faculty like the one I have here, but I never dreamt I could do it here. So I think that this has really come together quite miraculously and I, I couldn't be more pleased. It definitely seems meant to be. <laughs> Indeed. Aaron, now you're a movie lover and a Bremerton yeah. native. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your journey from Bremerton to Hollywood and then back again. Oh, okay. Well, born and raised in Bremerton. I uh, uh, graduated from Bremerton High School, as my shirt says right here. Go Knights. <laughs> Go East. <laughs> Went to East High. That's right. East High Knights. <laughs> um, where uh, during that period of time in my life, I had a Super 8 sound camera. And I was actually making feature length films while I was in high school. Uh, one of my favorite films called, uh, called um, oh, well, I forget the name of it now, but it, it involved a, a chase downtown on Pacific. And back in the late 70s, uh, we did what was called cruising with the cars in line up on both sides of, of Pacific. And so I, you know, I uh, basically hired a few uh, of my friends in high school to stage a high-speed chase that involved martial arts. <laughs> so, uh, of course, I forgot to tell the police that. <laughs> and uh, I was promptly nearly arrested. <laughs> but I got it on film. Perfect. And that's what counts. <laughs> um, so from there, um, after graduating from WSU and after being uh, an officer in the Navy, I uh, went to UCLA Film School where uh, I majored in screenwriting. Um, during uh, my stint at UCLA Film School, I was lucky enough to uh, be mentored under a number of different great professors. Uh, and also, I was a, uh, uh, lucky to win the uh, Samuel Goldwyn uh, Screenwriting Award, which attracted <clears throat> a lot of representation, namely an agent. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, while still in film school, I was able, uh, able to sell my first feature-length film screenplay to 20th Century Fox. Wow. Um, for nearly a million bucks. So wow. it was nice. But it was never made. And so I wrote another one and sold that to 20th Century Fox, and I sold two more. Uh, 20th Century Fox, all of which never really, you know, made it to the screen. Mm -hmm. But I had a great time working with the studio along the way. Uh, so about that time, um, I, a friend of mine said, well, give me your next screenplay, and I will put it in the hands of independent filmmakers. And at the time, I'm thinking, well, coming out of the studio system, I'm not so certain about this indie film thing. This is 12, 15 years ago now. Sure. And I'm thinking, okay, well, it has to be something different, and I think it sounds exciting. So I, we did, and uh, my friend was able to get it made. Now, on the heels of that, uh, we made another feature, and uh, about that period of time, um, um, I made uh, uh, connections with Tim, and Tim was saying, hey, we're starting something very, very interesting here. We've got something growing in the region at Olympic College, and we want to create a, kind of a film school um, conservatory. and." You know, if you'd be interested in coming up to take a look and see what we're doing. And so I did, and here I am. Uh, we have amazing students, amazing students. I mean, I first quarter here, I'm thinking, well, this is not Los Angeles, but it's a beautiful region from, you know, from where I grew up. And I can't believe the level of storytelling. I can't believe the ability of the students to put their passion, not only on the page, but on screen because they're making wonderful films here um, uh, w with the help of, of course, Amy. Amy's been uh, pushing the envelope, so to speak, with regards to allowing the students to develop their voice and style. So very exciting. And I'm, I can't wait to see what this new building and film school yields. Absolutely. Amy, I know you've spent time directing and acting in movies abroad. Tell me a little bit about your experience in Bolivia. Oh, so um, I went to Bolivia in 2005, mm -hmm. um, and really just as a tourist. And I uh, started working on a docudrama for National Geographic down there. And along the way, you know, in that experience, I met a bunch of, you know, other people in film because they were also working on that documentary. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, I went to a film festival in which uh, Jack Avila, um, who later became my producing partner, um, he was 
talking, he was giving this wonderful speech, and this is in 2005, about making his film, The Death of San Valalia, uh, on digital. And he shot it in New York, right? But he was back in Bolivia, you know, uh, where he was from, uh, talking about this and about how now films were going to be made, shot on this, maybe transferred to film for exhibition or theater, but that this was the new medium. And no one in Bolivia had even, you know, thought about this. They were still shooting on film. They made, you know, a film every 10 years, something like that. And so I saw, okay, this is a great opportunity. We can make films for a lot less, right? And I can make films there. And here are a bunch of people who really want to make films. And in especially youth there. Because the voices that had been privileged in Bolivia were, you know, the voices of the, you know, kind of old guard, right? And they were telling these students, you can only make a film about, you know, some kind of, you know, the idiosyncratic Bolivian history and voice and all this, you know. And all the people that I had come in contact with said, you know, well, I have this story. I have my own personal story. What about my story? You know, what about making a horror film? What about making something else? What about making genre films, comedies, you know, not just the same, you know, mega big Bolivian, you know, story, right? So I formed a production company down there and I worked with all of these people and I had just tons and tons of interns and open door policy. You can just come work with me. Uh, and uh, we, I produced um, with Jack 10 feature films uh, in 10 years and uh, I directed uh, five of those and I acted in a bunch of them as well. And then in 2015, uh, the Bolivian government uh, gave me an award. Mm -hmm. The parliament gave me an award for creating um, a new wave of Bolivian cinema. So it was pretty, it's so super exciting. It's I mean, so obviously exciting. It's great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really nice. It was it, 10 years later, yeah. you know. To have was, that validation for the yeah, work you put yeah, in. Yeah, because it was really hard, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and the thing is that, um, what I did in Bolivia, I see that opportunity now here, you know, and that's um, why I'm here is because I see a lot of people of all ages with voices, right? And they all have stories. And this is such a supportive community. I couldn't have done what I did in Bolivia without that supportive community and government really, you know, saying, hey, let's, let's facilitate your locations. Let's, you know, hook you up with the right people. Let's network. Let's collaborate. Let's become invested in culture, in films, right? And have, you know, this wonderful, you know, just personal investment in that. Um, and I think that that's something that can really happen here uh, in, in this region. Because we have, you know, just a somewhat small film community around here and in Seattle, but there's so much room, potential for growth. And the community is so uh, receptive to that. Mm -hmm. um, when I've shot, you know, small things around here or, you know, working with the students and we're looking for locations or things like that, the response from the community is just so great. It's so supportive of that. And then they, they see, you know, their location or even themselves sometimes in the films and they love it. Yeah. Right? I mean, they just, they, they know that they're part of something, part of something that's yes. bigger than everyone of us and it's growing and it privileges all these wonderful voices. Absolutely. And also just to add what Tim was saying earlier, um, you don't have to live in Los Angeles to make feature length films and be a successful filmmaker any longer. Uh, given the fact that we have self distribution platforms and what Amy speak, was speaking to with regards to the, the age of technology. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's fascinating and it's changing rapidly. Absolutely. So. Uh, the digital age not only gives us the ability to shoot digitally, we do everything digitally. We write it digitally, yes. we edit it digitally, we shoot it digitally, we project it digitally. And as Aaron just pointed out, even producing now, we have digital producing platforms, yes. whereas the money comes in from a project, it automatically those funds get distributed to the artists who have worked on it. So everything, all aspects of this have gone digital. So, and, and the, the cost has gone really to street level. This is so remarkable that um, as Amy was pointing out, students now have an opportunity to express their own unique voices and say what they have to say. And here in Bremerton, we have a lot of people, and this is why I love the fact that we're the most affordable film school in the nation. We have so many, you know, a lot of times 
the people that have the most to say are the folks who have gone through the rough sandpaper of life and are not privileged. And they have fabulous stories. And very often in the past, they haven't had an opportunity to tell those stories. Yeah, but today with a program like this, they do, and the timing is perfect. And I really want to congratulate Olympic College, the administration, for having the, uh, the insight uh, to, to, to support us in this vision and catch that wave that we've caught. Because now all of our students have this opportunity to really express that unique voice that they have. It's a great time to be an artist. Absolutely. It's a great time to be an artist, especially this being the most affordable film school in the nation. Sure. What a great opportunity yeah. and to have such talent behind it to back it up. I mean, the community is lucky to have you. Kitsap says thank you. I'd, I'd like you guys to touch a little bit more on bringing these voices to light with the style of guerrilla movie making. Tell me a little bit about how that works. Okay, so guerrilla filmmaking, the idea behind that is really that um, you're making a film with less resources than you would with a studio, right? So I can, and it's really about networking, right? It's about collaboration, networking, and getting together with a bunch of other, you know, talented individuals and deciding to make a film. And everyone's highly invested in that. And uh, it's, it removes all these obstacles to making the film when you can do that in, in that manner. So you're not, you know, saying like, okay, well, I have to raise $500 million. Yeah. I wonder how that's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you know, there, you can just, uh, you're, you're leveraging talent, mm -hmm. right? And so um, uh, a lot of films can be made for very little money and then make a profit, which is great. And it's really the new media distribution channels that have made that possible mm -hmm. because you have an outlet for all of it, this content being made. And you have a lot of people who are consuming it, right? Um, so, let's see, I had Well, I think, Amy, you're a testament to that as well because all five of the films you've produced, directed, and acted in, and written were made for micro-budgeted levels of, 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 of money. And you were able to get finance, uh, finance uh, distribution based upon that and the quality. I mean, really, it's the technology supports making high quality films for a fraction of the cost. And, mm -hmm. and Amy's done that. And Aaron's, Aaron's really hitting the nail on the head when he's talking about micro budgeting, because that's part of this new model where you can micro budget, you can use the new producing distribution channels to, to disperse the funds to the artists that worked on the project. You no longer need these multi-million dollar budgets. This is the, the most exciting thing about digital filmmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, I would 100% right. agree. Yeah, when I started making films, um, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of resources, but I knew a lot of people who uh, had a lot of talent. Probably shared vision as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, one of my films, um, I think we spent about $2,000 cash, right? Um, but mm -hmm. the total budget, you know, total budget was maybe about 100 uh thousand something like that mm -hmm. um, and that's really just you know counting the investment of all of the the people so who, right yeah it's mm -hmm. called soft money in our business so we have hard money cash and then mm -hmm. soft money and uh, it made I think over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars back yeah. and just in pure profit so mm -hmm. you know it's amazing so everyone got paid and we just made a lot of other films um, another thing that happened early in my career is the, the first feature film that I directed uh, played in theaters for five months in Bolivia. It was a huge hit, uh, which was incredibly surprising because, you know, it was my first film. And so that financed, too, a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, other films that I made. And this, this is not beyond the scope of any of our students to do. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, doing this with nothing you know, except for, you know, just some skills, which I've developed, obviously, over time. And so, you know, they're, they're starting here with hitting the ground running because we have a lot of equipment for them. And, uh, you know, we have great instruction and they just have all these opportunities and we're nurturing that voice and style. Now, when, when we talk about, you know, uh, their voice here, we're also, um, and style, style, you know, voice is what they want to say right? Why they want to say it, okay? And style is really how they're going to say it. So that's production values, you know, uh, what kind of camera angles they choose, things like that. And so why that is important is because that's what they have 
uh, to give to the world. Mm -hmm. That is this unique thing that they have to give. And it's also this unique quality that they have, um, you know, in, that makes them hireable, right? Mm -hmm. That makes them stand out. That's right, stand out is key. Mm -hmm. And also their, their networking co and collaborative mm -hmm. skills because they can go in and work on any team and they know exactly how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just think that um, they're, we're removing a huge amount of obstacles for these students to make films. And we're just, you know, providing a lot more for them, and especially with this new space, and you know, the equipment, everything is just—it's great. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, please. Getting paid. Are students getting paid? That—that's that's a very important issue that Amy brought up. You know, in, in my time, my journey through dramatic arts, uh, I went to the Yale School of Drama, and when I got out of there, I worked in the theater and eked out a paltry living. Uh, and then I was put under contract Universal, and for the first time I could support a condo, okay? Uh, our students today are being taught the skills to work in an industry. That, well, just for example, uh, were you to go to Indeed.com today and, and tell it just, just the parameters of the city of um, Seattle, okay, just the city of Seattle, and put in there the old term for digital filmmaking, which is video, and hit the button and you'll see anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 jobs will pop up on any given day. So our students are learning skills that are highly in demand where people that would have taken the traditional route that I initially took, the employment opportunities are, are, are very thin. Mm -hmm. Not so for the dramatic artists of the 21st century studying digital filmmaking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to touch upon um, another kind of crucial element of our um, curriculum is that, you know, we are training filmmakers, but we're also training people who can work on other films. Yes. And I have, you know, quite a few students who are learning this as an integral part of something else that they're doing. So we, we might have an engineering student, you know, have a, a minor or something in film, Absolutely. you know, these meta majors. Mm -hmm. And they have, I mean, the, the demand now for any job out there is that you have some kind of knowledge of how to make a film. Yeah. And really have Deliver privilege. Deliver content. Yeah, and yeah. privilege a story, primarily, because any Most kind definitely. of visual storytelling, this is story, right? Story lives And on. so that's why we're privileging that. And, yeah. um, you know, what is the next medium of storytelling is virtual reality and 360. So, uh, Aaron sure. and I um, have, are working Good on tip. a grant. Uh, yeah. Yes, we're all working on this grant. With the help of OC uh, and the support of OC uh, yeah. the found uh, Foundation and the Robinson Grant, we're able to do this. So we have a wonderful infrastructure here that sees that necessity. Yeah, well. and it's, it's so fascinating it because how, <laughs> how do you act, you know, in uh, a 360 degree environment? How do you light you know, it? How do you tell, yeah. how do you, uh, write a script for yeah. this, you know, how do you light it and do, you know, how mm -hmm. block the camera and everything. So it's, it's really, you know, all, all of our departments work in tan, are working in tandem to, to kind of, um, you know, bring these students into this entirely new mind space. I really wanted to touch upon also filming. what you're saying, tandem. I'm, I went to UCLA Film School, uh, uh, Tim went to Yale. One of the things that was lacking at UCLA Film School, I mean, I love UCLA, don't get me wrong. I had a great experience there. No t-shirt for that, but he no loves it. No t-shirt for yeah. that, you know, I can say it. So it's just East High, okay? Um, <clears throat> sorry. One of the things that was lacking at those film schools is a lack of collaboration with, between the individual departments. So we have acting, we have production, screenwriting and producing, and we all workshop with each other on student projects. A student, for example, could can write a screenplay or short screenplay, feature length screenplay in, in one of my classes and workshop it um, uh, in there and learn how to set up the financing with producing and then cast it with Tim's class, sure. you know, Tim being a renowned acting coach. And Amy will, will basically, you know, facilitate the production of the whole thing. Right. So we work very closely together. And honestly, I've never seen that before at a film school. So important. So it's crucial. It's so tell me a little bit about how the students are working with the community at large, how you guys as staff are working with the community, and mm -hmm. then where we, can we find everyone's work? Well, one of the ways in which we're working is we, we're setting up uh, relationships with various production companies that are interested in shooting on the Kitsap Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And some of our students are serving internships uh, on these films. And uh, what were you going to say, Aaron? No, I was just going to say we also have a variety of opportunities with local businesses even. 
Yes. We shoot a lot of content for the local businesses on every level. Sure. So it's not just production companies, although th that is a wonderful opportunity for our students to, to, to work on set as PAs and work their way up the ladder that way. We also have opportunities with local businesses that come to us and say, hey, can you generate this promotional video? Can you help us build this web content? This kind of thing. So Excellent. we're constantly getting emails about yeah. that. As and Amy said, everyone yeah. has a story to tell that yes. goes no different for local government and businesses. Everyone needs some right now. Absolutely. And right. you know, wait till the emergency tech, emergency, emerging technology comes into it. Sure. Well. Now, where can we see your students' work? Uh, so we have a YouTube channel for the OC Film School. Um, we have a Facebook page. We have Instagram, if you're on Instagram. Um, and we have an end of your screening uh, in yeah. collaboration with C-Film in downtown Bremerton. Yeah, thank you, C-Film. Uh, and uh, just recently, uh, some student films were featured on BCAD. Yes, yes and you. also they award won some awards. We had some award winners. Yeah, there are f local film festivals. Uh, if you I, want to talk I just wanted to mention the fact that many of our students, while they're still in the program, have started their own production companies, yes. and they're working around town. We've got one student that's shooting uh, commercials up here at Loxie Egan, yes. somebody else that features restaurants. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in fact, we've lost students out of the program. We lost one student to recently to, I can't, it's not Animal Planet anymore, but it's the produ production company that did Animal Planet. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to hold on to our students, but they are learning skills that are uh, valuable. So, uh, and we're excited when that happens, of course, even though we'd like people to finish our bachelor's degree program, which we haven't had a chance to talk about yet, our new bachelor's degree program. In the past, we've offered three associate degrees in filmmaking, but starting this year, we have our first bachelor's degree class beginning. So, And it's a cohort, is that correct? It's a cohort, exactly right. So in the lab, people come here and they, they take the two-year associate degree. After they graduate from that, they apply to the bachelor's program, they've got two more years to finish the bachelor's program. And that's a cohort, meaning they're with the same students for two years. And this is fantastic, because what comes out the other side is a production company. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And they all know each other, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and they know how to form a production company around yeah. that. Sure. I think the reason, main, uh, one of the reasons is for that is because we put the power of filmmaking directly in the hands of the students the first week of class. Mm -hmm. Like at other film schools, and I love film school, don't get me wrong, but uh, you have to kind of work your way th uh, through the uh, curriculum to actually touch the gear. We do it the first quarter here. Open the gear locker, let's make a film. Yes, uh, that's a very important point. Uh, Aaron's talking about the total immersion philosophy. And a lot of schools mm -hmm. don't do this. They make you sit in a, in a theory class for two years yes. before you can hit the closet. Mm -hmm. Our students here, we believe everything at once. As they're learning the theory, they should have a camera in their hand. They should be using that's the right. equipment. They should be writing scripts. Exactly. They should be acting in scenes. So if you want to be beginning. if you want to be put to work on set, you take digital film. So aim to put you right to work the first day of class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you guys, I just can't tell you how impressed I am with all the work that you've done to make this program happen and how lucky our community is to have you. Kitsap, I hope you're watching. Stay tuned to BCAT to watch more of the students' work here. And I know you guys have a festival coming up. We'll make we sure and, and mention that as well. Thank We're you. so lucky to have you. Kitsap is very Thank fortunate you. to have a school like this right in the middle. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you.